Hey folks, I'm Nicole Gilbert and this is the Nicole Gilbert Quilts YouTube channel. On today's video, we are going to go over creating these adorable scrap catchers. And I absolutely adore these. It's a very, very fast, quick project to make. You can use it, you can build it by just using charm squares and you don't even need a full charm pack, which is fantastic. This is a great way to get rid of your leftover charm squares. I have directions for putting this together uh, in the description below, but in today's video, I am going to walk you through step-by-step -step creating one for your own space. What I love about these is that when I am sitting at my table and I am trimming my half square triangles, as you can see here, you know, you get a lot of these teeny tiny little scrap bits that I like to save. There is a member of my quilt guild who uh, collects these and creates uh, dog pillows to donate uh, to our local shelters. And so uh, this is a great way for me to collect those. It's also a great way to keep my sewing space neat and tidy. Uh, before I had these sprinkled around my sewing space, I would tend to take thread that I had snipped from my machine or off of the edges of my blocks and kind of, oh my gosh, I can't even believe I'm about to admit this, but I would throw them on the floor and then just kind of vacuum them up or sweep them up later. This allows a space for it to all to go and everything stays a lot neater. I don't have little dog ears all over the place. Uh, it's just really, really great. Now I still keep my larger scraps in a tub like this. And so I have this big tub underneath my table uh, where I put my large scraps, but that's another video for another day. Uh, but these teeny tiny guys, perfect for this thread catcher. So I am gonna go gather my supplies and then we can dive on in. I'll see you soon. Okay, so before we get started with actually creating our awesome thread catcher, let's talk about supplies. And they're pretty minimum for this. So you are going to need 10 charm squares, meaning five by five cuts of fabric. So you could easily use, use scraps for this or um, just go ahead and, you know, rip a pad of charm pack and grab 10 squares. And then you're also going to need fusible interfacing. Now I'm using uh, Pelon PLF 288. It's just a lightweight uh, fusible. Um, and so it's, you know, it's smooth on one side. It's got the nice fusible stuff on the other. And we're going to use that just to create a little body so that our thread catcher stands up. Uh, you can do it without it. It will stand without it, but it'll be a little droopy, a little sad. And the stiffer the interfacing you use, the stabilizer you use, the uh, more rigid your thread catcher will be. Uh, but I like this one. It's a light to medium weight uh, interfacing and it's Pellon, so you can find it anywhere. And I'll leave a link to it uh, below in the comments. Now I'm using, like I said, uh, charm squares. Uh, these all come, I think all of them, yeah. These all come from the Happy Days collection by Sherry and Chelsea for Moda. Um, I love Sherry and Chelsea fabrics, so I tend to usually have some kind of all over the place. Again, I'll link to that in the description below. But what I will say is you can pick any fabrics you want for the exterior. So there'll be five of the fabrics will be for the exterior and five of them will be for the interior. Four of which will go around the sides, one will be in the bottom. So you can kind of keep that in mind when you're picking out your fabrics. I like to go with, as you can see on this one, kind of all over the place fabrics, uh, just cause it's fun. So mine are all different. Uh, however, for the interior, well, again, you can still pick whatever you'd like. I do suggest for this project and really any bag making project, you use a lighter color for the interior. It makes it easier to see the inside. And yes, I know this is going to be for scraps. It's not, you know, something you're going to be digging through, 
but I know for a fact I throw stuff in here sometimes just out of habit. And then I'm like, ooh, I could have saved that for something a little bit bigger. So having a light color on the inside does help. I tend to uh, go towards like a white low volume, or in this case, I'm gonna be doing yellows. So nice and bright, but still light. All right, folks. So our first step that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, follow your manufacturer's instructions, but we're going to fuse our interfacing to the back of our charm squares. Now, like I said, our charm squares or exterior fabric, interior fabric is five inch squared. Our interfacing has been cut at four and a half inches, okay? So it's just a little bit smaller and that just reduces bulk in the seams, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead, fuse that together and then I'll see you in just a bit. All right, so we're back from fusing our interface to our fabric. And what I have here is I have it laid out in the manner that it'll be together when we put it together. So what I do is in the center is your bottom fabric. So I like to use the drabest, plainest, or darkest fabric in the center. I know that this blue is darker, but it's all floral and pretty. So I put the gray in the center. This will end up being the exterior bottom of your thread catcher. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew each of these to the center using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I've got the interior already completed so that you can see what that looks like. So we're creating this, okay? And now you can kind of start to see where this is going to come up. These are going to get sewn together, and now we're starting to create our thread catcher. You will see that there's kind of some turn in here because we're sewing over ourselves, and so we're pressing, but we're keeping this open because we're not folding this all the way in. Eventually, it will be because we're going to sew these two edges together, but right now, we've got a little bit of turning happening, and that's totally okay. Uh, it will kind of work itself out in the next step. So we're, you're gonna go ahead and you are gonna go and sew all of those pieces to the center so that you have something that looks like this. All right, and then when we get to the next stage, I will show you how we're going to construct these pieces together, but spoiler alert, if you're already over there, you totally could just take your edges and sew them together. And that's all you're going to do is you're just going to sew all those pieces together. But I'll go over that a little bit more in depth after you've completed this step. All right. I'll see you in a moment. All right. So we have sewn everything to the center. And just like with before, if you look over on this side, you'll see there's some twisting. It's not the prettiest on the outside, but you're not going to see that part. So don't worry about it. All right. So our next stage is that we are going to sew all of our sides together. Meaning we're going to take two sides like this and we're going to align them. So these sides, these sides right here are together and you're going to line them up at the top and you're going to stitch a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you're going to notice when you get down here, you know, you might sew if you, press your seams open, you know, something's going to happen. You're going to get a twist. You're going to get a bend. Same thing that happens will happen if you are pressing to one side. I'm just showing you mine because I press them open, but that's okay. I'm going to show you what it looks like in a second so that you can see that that won't really affect the bag. Now, if you want things to lay super flat, just go ahead and clip those uh, seams right where they come together so that things nest a little bit easier. But you're just gonna go through and sew right up that a quarter inch seam allowance. And you're gonna do that all the way around. So you're gonna do that with these, you're gonna do that with these, with these, and with these. And what that gives you is this, all right? So as you can see, it's a little dark in there. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit. 
but it's all nice and neat and crisp once it's all been sewn together and the, and the seam has been pressed. So this is going to be the interior of our bag. You're really looking exactly what the interior of my thread catcher is going to look like right now. So I am going to go, um, to go ahead and I'm going to create this out of this. And when we come together, I'm going to show you how to put it together. And we're at the last step. All right, folks, I'll see you in a moment. Okay. So now you'll see that we have two fun little, totally unfinished little box baggy things for lack of a better term. What we want to do is put them together, right sides together. Okay. So basically inside out or the opposite of how they'll be in our final thread catcher. So this is my interior, my interior. I'm going to go ahead and turn inside out or right side out. My exterior, I'm going to leave the way it came off of my sewing machine because that's the opposite of what it's going to be. So now we're putting them together, right sides together. So we are fitting your interior inside of your exterior, like so. And they're right sides together. Now what you're going to do is you'll line up the corners. Okay. I like to pin in the corners. It's not very long enough really to pin all the way through, but just pin the corners so that things line up nicely. And you're going to sew around the ends, leaving one of them. I would start. So what I would do is I've lined up these two corners here. I would start just to the left of the corner, go across it, go all the way around. And when I got to this corner, I would pass it and stop. So I would end up with about three inches open here. And that's going to be where we turn it inside out. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You go ahead and do yours and I will see you in a moment. All right. So now we have sewn a quarter of an inch all the way around the top minus this one where we left a hole open. All right. At this point, we're just going to go ahead and turn it right sides out. Okay. Now you end up with this kind of weird balloon looking thing. Then we're going to put the inside inside of the outside. Now we're just going to go ahead and push those corners into itself. And if you kept your seams, those corner seams lined up while you were sewing, they should pop into each other pretty well. Okay. Now our final step is we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to press this so that we don't have this balloon edge around the top. We're going to press it. And then I use an eighth of an inch seam allowance to stop stitch all the way around. And while I'm pressing, I'll press this straight. And then that eighth of an inch seam allowance will catch this and it will be nice and sealed shut. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I will meet you in a moment when we are all done. And there you have it, folks, your thread catcher. This is a super fast, super easy project, and it's a great way for you to keep your sewing studio organized. All right, folks, I would love to see yours. Uh, and don't forget, I have links to kind of all the things I've mentioned below in this description. Happy sewing. I'll see you soon.